One. Ladies and gentlemen, the Premier League's back. A little bit more of a shorter wait this time around than I think it was before, but obviously it started really well for James and his Arsenal. Um, I'll hold fire on any sort of reaction on that because we have just done a video reacting to that first game, so please do go check that out. Hopefully that'll be in the description. If not, in our suggested, or go to our channel page. While you're there, hit the subscribe button if you're not already, because that would be really helpful for us. Um, but James, let's move on to the rest of the games. James and I are going to just do a versus predictions here real quick. We'll kind of go like do two and then do two and then do two, et cetera, et cetera, just to make sure we're not being accused of copying one another. James Fulham at home. Liverpool coming to town. Nice welcome back to the Premier League. Who have you got winning in uh, Fulham versus Liverpool um, tomorrow? Tuesday? I got 3 0 Liverpool. Liverpool, obviously, last week against Manchester City, getting a big win, winning the Community Shield. The train with Liverpool keep uh, keeps on going. Fulham, on the other hand, you don't know what you're going to get with them. And it's probably one of the worst pictures that they could get for the first game of the season. So, yeah, I got Liverpool winning 3 0. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm not going as hard as you. I think I'm going to go 2-0. Uh, but for me, I think a couple of nice things might happen. So what I mean by that is maybe Darwin Nunez gets his first goal. Maybe after Mo Salah gets his contract, maybe he gets a goal, right? I think positives will be taken from that game for Liverpool, even though it might not be the excuse me, the biggest win that they were hoping for. Um, moving on to the first of the three o'clock games, Bournemouth at home against Aston Villa. Weird game for me to call. Really tough game. Bournemouth back in the league. Villa away from home, like... Don't know quite how it's going to boil, uh, how you know it's going to kind of boil down, what it's going to boil down to here. I've got Villa winning one nil. I just think there's a couple of players in there with individual brilliance who'll be able to kind of take the game from them. And again, Bournemouth, James. I'll be honest with you, the way this team's operated in the off-season, this doesn't seem like a football team that thinks they're going to be here next year. I think they've spent ten million um, on on kind of improving the squad here. So, so again, I'm not super high on Bournemouth. Who, who have you got there, Bournemouth? The difference to in to me is going to be the, pen, the the Premier League quality. The fact that you got Ollie Watkins, you got Felipe Coutinho there. I got I got Villa scraping a one 0 victory. You know the ones where like they might get a little early goal and just. Outside of the box, deflected, continue. No, it will be on the bottom end of the match of the day matches. Right, and then, right. And I say that and then it's going to be a four. It's going to be an eight goal thriller, you know. Well, again, speaking of uh, potentially bottom of match of the day, James, who have you got Leeds at home three o'clock tomorrow against Wolves? I, I get it. Leeds, to the best entertainers in the Premier League, always crazy stuff there. And, and, ho and hopefully it might. But this one to me just smells the bottom of the table. Matcha matcha there. I can see this being a nil nil game. Both like both teams happy to share the spoils and, and get a point each. Look, I tend to agree with you. I'm gonna go with a I'm gonna go with a goal each though. I think, you know, first game back, I think some weird things can happen. Defenders not making great shouts, maybe maybe strikers keen to, you know, take advantage of mistakes. So I'm gonna go one one for that one, uh, Leeds versus Wolves. Another game. Newcastle at home, Nottingham Forest back in the Premier League. Uh, James, I'm, I'm going to stick with like, I'm going to say 2-0. Um, I think this would be a very different game if, if this was at Nottingham Forest, but the game I keep attaching to Newcastle is momentum. Momentum, momentum, momentum. Keeping the likes of St. Maximum, Bruno Guimaraes, Callum Wilson, you know, back fighting fit, right? Miguel Almiron is still there. Um, you know, you, you signed Sven Botman. He, he was, he was you know, looked, looked at by a lot of top European clubs as, as a signing for them. So to me, yeah, motivation and, and momentum are the two words I look at for Newcastle. So I've got them winning 2-0 against uh, against um, Forest. Again, Jack, I totally agree with you with um, Newcastle. The crazy thing for me is that they didn't go mad in the transfer window. Again, they're probably looking at a mid-table finish, but again, with the new oh, like owners, the way the fans were buzzing after the, um, the last home game against Arsenal, um, Nottingham Forest coming, coming into the first game in Premier League in many years, I got Newcastle winning 2-0. Can Jesse Lingard save them? That's the real question. Um, James, moving on to the final three o'clock game of tomorrow. You've got Spurs at home against Southampton. Who have you got winning that one? Um, I've got Spurs winning it 3-0. You know, just overall, Spurs seem to have always sat well in the Premier League, especially remember last year when Nuno, I think that they, were, that they, um, they won their first three games. Kind fixture to them. They have a decent record against 
Southampton. Um, actually, they actually lost to them last season. What well, well, I say, remember, remember the famous Conte game where he, he was given it, and then um, obviously Tottenham conceded as they always do. But yeah, I got three one to Tottenham. Yeah, look, a lot of similar kind of thoughts there. Um, I, I think it's going to be four, though. Uh, you mentioned kind wow. fixture. I would say maybe the most kind fixture that they could have gotten They're at home or against this Saints team, who I think, you know, I've got the Saints going down this year, which really breaks my heart. You know, that's my local team. Um, but again, I think this is going to be leaky. Again, I know this is a disputed topic, but for me, this is the best attack in the league. And I think that Conte is going to puff his chest out and this team are going to try and set a marker down. Again, they're setting a marker down against like arguably the easiest team they could set a marker down. So I don't know, even if they do win 4 now, I'm not going to be like, wow, look out for Spurs, they're going to win the league. But I do see that kind of a kind of a result happening. Um, evening game, I say evening. Yeah, 5.30 is still kind of the evening, I guess. Everton at home, Goodison Park against Chelsea. Tough game for me to call, really tough game. I'm going to go 2-1 for Chelsea. But that, I mean, I don't trust either of these teams, James. Teams, James and I, I don't know what I'm going to get really from either of them so i'll be honest with you somebody something from mount something from sterling on his debut something from kai havertz th these are the difference makers i'm looking for and everton at goodison maybe getting lucky with one goal that's the only reason i've gone with 2-1 what have you got i feel like um this is the, this is the kind of wake-up call that chelsea may need probably losing the first game i have chelsea losing the game 1-0 you look at their recent record just the record overall in goodison hasn't been great the last two um, the last two years that they've been there, they've um, they both lost them 1-0. I got Everton winning. Yes, Everton haven't had the greatest summer. And, and, and overall, it's been shaky, especially last year. But something about Goodison, first game of the season, I can see them getting a, a, a nice result there. So I got Everton 1-0. And obviously, a little bit of a thing to mention as well is Frank Lampard's the coach of Everton. So I think if he knows this kind, of, these kind of Chelsea players, and or at least some of those Chelsea players a little better, maybe he will have a couple of tricks up his sleeve to to pull on them. Um, James, moving on to Sunday, going into the final three games, Leicester City at home at the King Power Stadium against Brentford. Who have you got in that one? Um, it's a tough one. Leicester has been a bit weird this season, over like overall. Haven't made a splash and haven't made that next step. Maybe again, <laughs> sold maybe two know, goalkeepers. Literally yeah. just sold two goalkeepers. That's it. <laughs> maybe they know Jamie Vardy's going to like going to be back to his best. God knows how long. The guy's like forty five now. But um, it's a weird one because a lot of players are unsettled there. I can see the way that their chance winning though has started. I, I can see him kind of affecting it. I see Brentford winning two 0 yeah, um, uh, that's a really tough one. I'm, I'm going to say 1-0 Leicester. Um, again, I think that the, I would imagine the m kind of modus operandi of Leicester this offseason has been if we sell somebody, we'll sell them for loads of money and then we'll buy a replacement for less than the player that we sold for, right? That That is kind of the way that I see them working. Your comment about Jamie Vardy, maybe they're hoping Pats and Daka will step up, step up this year. Maybe that that's kind of the theory going forward. But yeah, again, tough game for me to call Brentford are a tricky team to call against and like you say with Leicester there's no I talked about Newcastle having all this momentum I can't think of a team with less momentum right now than Leicester City um, moving on to the second two o'clock game on Sunday Manchester United are at home Eric Ten Hag making his Manchester United managerial debut against Brighton and Hove Albion um, I'm going to go 2-1 Manchester United uh, I don't think it's I don't think this is easy though I think this will be a kind of a lucky skin of their teeth victory for Manchester United Cristiano Ronaldo pulls something out late or, or or a deflected goal or a penalty which maybe shouldn't be a penalty you know some sort of classic Manchester United type type ploy for them to win this game James I can easily see this being a draw I can easily see Brighton winning this I'm not going to lie you know this is Graham Potter we know Neil Mope can kind of get under people's skin but from what I've seen very briefly of Manchester United in pre-season and, and, and the style in which they're playing. I think there's new optimism here and we're, we're going to see some refreshed faces for, for, for familiar but refreshed faces for Manchester United. So Man United 2-1, who have you got in that one? Um, I have Man United winning 3-1. I, I, I'm Manchester United Skies from last year. I think losing 4-0 could have been even more the, the, the disgraceful performance. I feel like the players should have motivation to want to not only help their new manager and let him settle in with a like like with a nice victory and obviously the crowd getting ready to support their um, new man. I can see this being a 3-1 victory. I can see Manchester United conceding a lot of chance with chances in Brentford as they have in many years not taking these chances. I see Manchester United win 3-1. 
James, final game of the week for you to predict on. West Ham are at home, but the people coming to town are Manchester City. Who have you got in this one? This is a tough one. I'm going to say 3-2. Man. What a way to Now, it's weird because I guess you get it, but Jack, West Ham have had a good transfer window. They are. Team that I, I was tempted. I'm tempted to say... No, no, no. Three, two. Manchester City. Manchester okay. City beating Leicester. Let's go for two goals for Erlen Haller. Ooh, that would be a strong way to start. Um, I'm going to go three, three nil. I think Manchester City. Yeah, I think Haaland will score. Um, West Ham. They're with. They're probably going to be without Gianluca Scamacca, which I think again over the course of their season is this one game going to define their season no absolutely not but again I don't know what that main threat is going to be uh, because I don't think they can continue from an attacking sense what they were doing last year and still reap the same benefits as they were uh, for, from before so for me yeah I think Man City will have a point to prove they'll like Spurs like probably Liverpool as well they'll want to put a little bit of a marker down um, so to me yeah can I see Erling Haaland getting goals when it actually matters nudge nudge wink wink to the Champions League sorry to the Community Shield where he, he laughed after he missed that chance where he hit the crossbar could not believe that this guy's going to kill people um, but yeah no I'm going to go I'm going to go Man City uh, 3-0 no on that one there guys at home again James and I say this all the time it's very, it's very easy to destroy. It's not very easy to create. So if you want to come at our predictions and after the fact be like, oh, you were so wrong, let's see your predictions first. Because me and James, we need ammunition to have, you know, come back at you here real quick. Obviously, we'll be keeping up Jack versus James. We're definitely, definitely going to do it in the Champions League. A commitment to do that 38 times over the course of a season is going to be tricky, but we're going to try and do Jack versus James every single game week here going forward. Like I said, any of you guys Put your predictions down there, drop a like on the video, hit the subscribe button as well if you're not, and hit the bell as well. James, anything else from you, mate? Guys, like, share, and subscribe, and let's see your predictions. Comment down below. This is Jack and James, and we will see you next time.